Jason May here. This is the installation video for the DB Off-Road 420 O-Ring chain kit, all right, for your primary drive on the, for the Soron Light B, all right? I have uh, my Soron Light B MX here. Yes, the MX, the very first model Soron, okay? And, uh, and we are gonna go install that today, all right? Right now, I have the, 219, the DB Off-Road 219 chain kit on there, so we're gonna be taking that guy off. It, it's done its service and it's time to replace it, all right? And this time I've decided to go with the 420 chain kit because I, I think it's gonna, it'll be less maintenance and it'll last longer. And it'll, yeah, it'll be easier to work on too, <laughs> okay? Because that 219 chain kit, the 219 chain is kind of a, a pain to work with is what I'll say, okay? Um, anyway, I'm not gonna go too much in depth with it. We're gonna, um, I already, I think I already did a show and tell video on this, all right? I'll try to put a link at the end of the video if you wanna learn more about this kit, but this is just the installation video. I will go over all the, we'll do a quick inventory of the parts, and then we'll get to installing it, all right? He's maybe just gonna try to make this uh, kinda quick, and as quick as possible video, all right? I'm not gonna go in very much detail, all right? Until we get to the point where we install this, all right? This one's a little trickier than the 219 chain kit because it's got a shim in it, okay? There's a shim for the big sprocket, and uh, if you're, if the, if the chain or the the sprocket alignment is off, you need to use this shim, okay? So um, I don't know if we're gonna have to use it or not. It's kind of DB off road kind of says you might need it, you might not need it. All right, so I did not need it for the 219 chain kit. So okay, so uh, let's uh, let's get started. Okay, so this is the inventory uh, video clip, all right? So you should have a rear sprocket or the bigger the bigger sprocket, all right? Um, this is a 30 tooth 420 um, sprocket, all right? This will go on your jack shaft. It should have came with a shim, all right? This is the shim that goes with it. Um, it should have came with a front or counter sprocket, all right? It's a 13 tooth 420 counter sprocket. This is the one that goes on the motor. It should come with a chain, all right? There's there's a pretty looking gold O-ring chain, and it's already got the the master link installed, so we shouldn't have to take it apart, all right? If we, I mean, yeah, we shouldn't have to take it apart, but we could if we want to, all right? That's the beauty of this. You can take it apart while it's on the bike. Um, and then uh, you should have a little instruction manual that came with it, all right? Um, I'll quickly go over it. Uh, it's telling you that you should put this uh, shim on there if needed for alignment, okay? And then you, you mount the sprocket with the beveled edge towards the bike, right? So that's the part that's sticking out here, right? So this is the part that, that mates to the jack shaft. So um, all the numbers, all right, when you see the number on the, the sprocket should be facing outwards, okay? Outwards from the bike. Yeah, so. Yep. So see how this has the number facing outwards? This would be uh, you would be looking at the motor and you should be able to see these numbers, okay? And then uh, it comes with the, uh, this is the, the little, this is the top to the packaging, okay? It says uh, Dirty Bike 420 Primary Belt to Chain Conversion Kit Sealed X-Ring, okay? Um, I just call it an O-Ring. And then it says you can get the installation instru instructions, so if you, if you want to find the installation instructions, go to americansoron.com. They should have them there. I just looked at them, and they're there. Um, and then this is a D, this is who makes it, right? DB or Dirty Bike Off Road. All right. I've run their 219 chain kit, and I was quite impressed with it. Okay. All right. So uh, let's get to installing this. Okay. Welcome to your hot August nights. Uh... 420 chain kit installation video <laughs> and I will be your host Hades Omega here. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove your wheel. Well, okay, the first thing you're going to do is put it on a stand. See how my bike is on a stand right now? It's best, it would be best if you put it on a stand, all right? I don't, try to try to get your bike off of the ground somehow, okay? Um, use a lift, use a jack, jack stand, something, uh, a mo motocross stand, use, use something to get it up in the air, right? Because we need to remove the swing armor basically, all right? So first thing we're gonna do is remove the chain. Um, I've got a 17 millimeter socket here and an impact driver. You use whatever you needed to take it off the axle. Okay, I'm removing the chain on the other side. Okay, 
Okay. Um, you sh if you have a if you have your brake, you're gonna have to you just take the brake bracket. Mine doesn't have the brake on the caliper on it, all right. And then just ha what I do is I hang it over the swing arm right here if it was still attached, all right. But mine doesn't have one. Right? Okay, make sure your spacers, you, you keep them in there, all right? They may fall out, you may lose them. Well, you'll have an axle and then two, uh, two of these uh, adjustment blocks, all right? One of them should be on the axle still. Use a 12 millimeter to remove this bolt right here, okay? The one in the middle of the linkage. I'm using a 12 millimeter socket on a helps if you have a six millimeter Allen wrench to help wiggle it out. Okay. Should have plenty of grease on it. Also, if you tug up and down on the swing arm a little bit, it'll come out easier. There you go. Okay, I realized like I probably should have removed my chain. Um, I'm gonna see if I can do it without taking the chain off, okay. You can probably do it without taking the chain off. <laughs> so, um, oh yeah, okay, so another thing that makes it easier is if you take your foot pegs, foot peg brackets off. So that's what we're going to do next. All right, since I have uh, this foot peg brace here, I'm going to take my foot pegs off because it makes it easier to work with. All right. So this brace right here. Not everyone ha will have that, okay. Okay, it's a six millimeter um, Allen head bolt. Oh. Okay, that's my foot peg assembly right there. I just take the whole thing off. Um, usually, I, I think I really only take one off, right? I just take I take the one with the with the uh, kickstand off. All right. Next thing to do is uh, we're going to remove the uh, swing arm. Okay, uh, right over here is a swing arm bolt. All right, or a swing arm nut. Uh, this is a different nut than the stock one. All right, the stock one has this thing with like the four four claws that gotta go in and and they they take it out i modified mine so a nut would come off all right so you're going to need a special tool for that but however i don't need a special tool i just need a socket all right so much easier okay i think i need that all right uh the other side has a five millimeter allen bolt on it all right or allen head on it and uh, so if the axle spins have that on there all right which is what's going on right now. Okay. All right. And then now you should be able to remove your swing arm axle. Okay, Hades Omega kind of messed up already. So before you even take the wheel off, take this. Uh, you got to take the sprocket cover off, right? Um, that's the two. two your, there'll be two bolts here. Mine doesn't have it. Okay, I took it off. Um, it's. Uh, it's this guy, okay? Make sure you take this guy off. It's a two two little bolts. I think they're four millimeters. Take those off. That should come out, and then you'll you'll see this, all right? But it, it won't have a it won't have a chain on it. Like <laughs> it should have a belt, right? If you if you have the belt, um, and then uh, the what helps take it out is an impact gun, all right? If you have an impact gun, and mine's a 19 millimeter bolt, but your uh, stock one is 17. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, my bike is like super modified. <laughs> it's so much different than a, a normal. Soron. Okay, uh, but I guess if you forget, like me, to take the wheel off first, you can stick something through the the sprocket here, okay? Right there, all right? So it won't move, all right? I, I hope I won't have problems with it moving. Let's see. Here we go. Oh, it came right out. <laughs> that was easy. Okay, that's the, the nut for that. Okay, um, you're going to want to remove the swing arm axle, all right, or swing arm bolt. Just press it on the other side and it should pop out. If it's not popping out, just wiggle it. Or you can use an Allen wrench. There we go. Okay. Uh, there should be a washer, all right, it just fell out on the other side. There should be a washer on the other side, all right, behind the, behind the, uh, the, the nut. All right, just pull it out. The wiggle, oh, and then the, my primary drive just 
fell out just like that. Okay, the next thing we got to do is, uh, since the primary drive is loose now, all right, we got to remove all the chains. All right, so take out the uh, take out the primary drive chain. Okay, and then it should just come out. Okay, or the or the belt. All right, if you got the belt. Okay, marvel at my jack shaft. It's at horrible in horrible condition. Also, my okay, yeah, my the seal fell off of mine. Uh, that's okay. If the seal fell out of your uh, counter shaft sprocket, just pop it back in. All right, because mine just did. <laughs> Alright, it's got to be on there so the bearings are happy, okay? And then remember there's a spacer here, alright? And there's a seal, alright? Right here there's another spacer and a seal, alright? Don't get them mixed up. Okay, so now that the uh, now that the jack shaft is out, you can uh, remove the... Uh, try not to get any dirt on this, guys. This is the, uh, this is the swing, arm, uh, swing arm axle. Okay, uh, go ahead and remove the, the chain or belt, whatever whatever you got in there. All right, it should just come right out now. All right, there it is. So marvel at a 219 chain. Tough, tough guy, I'll tell you that. This guy took a lot of punishment, I'll tell you, but also made me tighten it a lot. <laughs> okay, la uh, last thing to do is to remove the, uh, the sprocket. If it doesn't come doesn't come out <laughs> oh there we go okay if it doesn't come right out you're gonna have to use a, a puller okay and mine just came right out so no deal all right there is also a uh, a washer here all right there's um a conical washer all right this is like a it's to keep it from uh, from backing out all right it's a spring washer make sure you don't lose that all right there's there's the front sprocket right there all right yours will look like a pulley all right not a sprocket Okay, there should be a key here. Make sure that you don't lose that. Make sure that stays there. All right. Marvel at the Surad motor and it's kind of semi-naked glory. All right. All right, so the stuff that came out the front, all right, was the front sprocket, the, uh, the bolt, the nut, and the spring washer. Okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and install the the front sprocket. All right, the counter sprocket, the one that goes on the motor. It's the smaller of the two. It'll say 13-420 on it. All right, you want to install it with those numbers facing outwards. Okay, you want to be able to read that from the outside. All right, if you install it this way, you installed it backwards. Okay, so remember that that key is still there. All right, make sure the key is still on there. We'll press that on there. Okay, so yeah, if it doesn't slip on there, you can get a socket and hit it with a hammer, all right? Um, make, yeah, make sure there's nothing back there also. Okay, but make sure you line up the key, press it in there, all right? It just goes right in. It's kind of, it's disturbing how loose it is. <laughs> okay, um, there's a pretty big gap from the edge of this, so I'm not sure. Um, but we're going to put the spring washer back in, all right? There it is. Make sure the cone part is facing outwards. And then you're gonna put your uh, your axle, I mean the center nut back in, okay? And you're just gonna be able, you're, you're only gonna be able to do it hand tight, all right? I want to try to do it as tight as I can with the impact gun, but later we'll torque it, okay? Because we can't, it's, it'll be hard to torque right now, all right? Okay. Maybe that's maybe that's good enough. Hold on. Okay, so there's the uh, front sprockets installed. Okay, because I'm such a nice guy, I'm gonna show you what hap what happens if you cannot remove this sprocket. All right, so uh, this this pulley. Okay, this is the this is the stock pulley. All right, um, this is my stock pulley, and then that's the 219 chain. Marvel at how much smaller it is. Right? <laughs> okay, um, so if you can't get it off, you're gonna have to use a pulley puller. Okay, like like you would use in automotive applications. All right. And I've I've shot a video about this before, so yeah. But there it is. It would go like that. You you would get the three jaws on there somehow. All right, it's kind of hard. Okay, you're gonna go like that. All right, and then you you're gonna put it behind this pulley. All right, like that. All right, let's. And then that's on the motor right there. All right, and then so you've got this part here that pushes on that that uh, center portion. All right, the center part of the motor. All right, and then you're just gonna tighten this 
until the sprocket comes out, all right? It, it shouldn't be very difficult, is what I want to say, all right? But um, mine just popped right out because I've probably done this like a zillion times. I've done this a lot of times. I've done this like three times already, so so it's probably all loose and stuff now, all right? And then that will pop out, okay? So that if if you're having trouble taking that out, you're going to need one of these, all right? So make sure you got one of these beforehand, all right? This is a three-jaw puller, all right? Three-jaw pulley puller. Okay, you can find them at your local auto parts store, all right? It's a pretty, pretty common tool, all right? And they, they do kind of don't last long because they... You can see mine's already coming apart. It's the, the threads are shearing on mine, so. <laughs> okay. All right, next thing next thing we gotta do is remove the uh, the large pulley, okay? Or the large pulley. Okay, so to make this easier for me, I put it on a vise, all right? If you got a big enough vise, uh, where I've got it on is like the, the parts, the like the parts that stick out of the other, um, where the uh, front sprocket is, all right? The counter sprocket. It's on there, okay, to keep it from spinning. There's kind of not enough room to grab it on the back, all right, and it's kind of hard. If you uh, if you have if you don't have a vise, you could use this, all right. Um, what I what I've done in the past is I've held this between my legs, all right, and I've used a clutch. This is a clutch holder tool, all right. If you got if you work on motorcycle clutches, you might have one of these, all right. You put this, you can put it like in there, all right. See, it's a perfect tool for it, man. Look at that, see? And that will hold it. That'll keep it from spinning, all right? You can use the other side too, the side with the pegs on it. And use that also, okay? But, but yeah. It's like this thing, this tool was designed for the for the DB off-road thing. <laughs> all right. Okay, cool. so we're gonna use, um, I'll use this just to make sure it doesn't move, all right? Let it rip. Do it cross pack. Okay, that's most of the way out. This pocket should be free. All right, make sure that seal is still on there. There's the old sprocket. All right, um, yours will look like a pulley if you have a belt. Okay, I'm uh, let's take the packaging off of this. Okay, I've got the, the new sprocket here, all right, the 420 sprocket. So make sure that the the numbers, all right, it says here 30-420 right there. All right, it's kind of hard to see because of the light, but yeah. Make sure that's facing outwards, okay? You're looking at it when you're tightening this, all right? And see this this bevel here? This should be on the bottom, all right, according to the instructions, all right? doesn't matter where you install it, all right? Just make sure it's facing out towards you, okay, the numbers. All right, I'm going to line up the holes. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put the bolts in. I'm going to use Loctite on the bolts. All right, always put Loctite. We don't want this to come out. So use like a blue Loctite or something. All right. So I'm just going to kind of just finger them in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to use the impact gun to just screw them in, all right, not torque it, all right. I'm just going to put it in very lightly. Uh... All right, I'm going to install it using a cross pattern or a star pattern. Get a torque wrench. Okay, I got my torque wrench set for uh, 15 newton meters. All right, it's either 11 foot pounds or 15 newton meters. All right, guys, not a lot. All right, I'm going to put my clutch holder tool here for support. All right, so it doesn't fall off my vise. Okay, start tightening them a right, little bit at a time.
Okay, I set my torque wrench to a lower torque, like 10, because it's not clicking. There we go. I think it's got to be on there tighter. Huh? Okay, I'm going to step it up to like uh, 13. Okay, this is 15. Okay, and I'm going to go around in a circle one more time. Just to make sure I got everything. Might be time to replace this jack shaft now. <laughs> this jack shaft looks a little old. Okay. okay, sprockets on there. Okay, so now here's the here's the weird part about this. I didn't put the shim on this, alright guys? So. We're going to have to put this back in and check to see if it's straight. And I don't really know how to do that. If, uh, <laughs> all right. Um, but anyway, let's put the chain on. Okay, so the motor should spin counterclockwise, right, normally. Um, so the, um, the master link clip should face, um, the, the closed end should be going left, all right, just like how it is right now. That's how we're going to install it, right? You want to install it with the clip facing outwards or else it'll be real pain in the ass to get out, okay? <laughs> Alright, make sure you got your spacers and all the seals are still on there, okay? Okay, they should be on both sides. Alright, um, we're going to go ahead and put this back in, sort of, kind of. We're going to put it in and check the alignment first, all right, before we actually put it in. Okay, so uh, what you got to do is uh, you got to install this, uh, the sprocket, alright, the jack shaft without... Um, without the chain on there okay so i'm going to put that back in there all right just like that if it's lined if it's already if it if it's lined up it's pretty easy <laughs> all right and then you gotta tighten all the bolts and stuff i don't know how the hell you're supposed to do that if uh if the chain's not on there right okay i'm gonna put this back on I'm gonna to torque it. It says 26 foot pounds. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and torque this to 26 foot pounds. This is more work. I kind of don't like it. <laughs> okay, should have the jack shaft on there and it should be spinning. All right, like that. All right, now we're gonna check to see for a lot check for alignment. All right, guys. Well, all right. I've been playing around with this. All right, so you've got it in there, and you have to check the alignment, guys. Right? So you got to use something like a, a straight edge or something. All right. I have, I have rulers. All right, guys, but they're too big. They don't fit in there. This is a saw blade. Okay, it's for like a, a saw. <laughs> yeah, like a saw, like a hacksaw. All right. I'm, I'm hoping that this thing is straight. All right. I think it is. I don't know, maybe I should get another one, but, um, yeah, so what you're going to want to do is hold it up to the front sprocket, all right, is what I did, all right, hold it up to the front sprocket so it's flat, and hold it on there, all right, till it's flat, all right, and then you're going to want to look at where it lines up, so see it's flat right now, all right, on the sprocket, hold it flat. On the sp on the front sprocket, all right, and then you got to go look back in there, all right, and then see if there's any space, all right. If there's if there's a space between the saw blade and the rear sprocket, all right, and there is, okay. So you can see it's not it's not touching, all right. So that means I think we got to add the shim to it. Like even if I put it, yeah, even if I put it this way, yeah, I guess I guess you could put it just you could just put it flat. See, and it's still not, it's not touching. See? Even if I do it perpendicular, yeah, see? There's a play in there, okay? They said if you have more than one millimeter of play, then you need you need to use that that uh, that thingamajigger, okay? And I think we do, all right? We gotta put the shim in, so. Hayes Vega's gonna take it back out. 
and we're gonna install the shim. <laughs> More work, but hey, we gotta do it the right way, right? All right. Okay, I'm gonna remove it. Should be easy. We didn't. Oh yeah, yeah. I have to. I have to loosen it first. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take the jack shaft out again. All right, remember, it's got to be all torqued. It could be because this one isn't torqued yet, but we, we can't torque it unless we put the with the put the chain in there. So that's what, another thing that worries me. But let's worry about that later. <laughs> Okay, and then we're gonna we're gonna go install the shim on this guy. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this bad boy off and put this back in the vise. All right. So can you tell? Can you tell Hayes Omega is frustrated right now? Yeah. Yes, I am. This is a lot more work, man. It's like double the work, almost. Okay. I'm gonna go remove these guys. They shouldn't be hard to take off yet. Okay, we're gonna remove the sprocket. Put the spacer in. Okay, line the spacer up. Install the sprocket. Install the sprocket and then start threading. Nah, uh, hold on. Okay, we gotta we gotta put the thing back on it. Yeah, now so now it's kind of tricky because you have to line up the spacer and and the sprocket. So freaking annoying. Okay, I'm gonna go put the Loctite back on. I shouldn't have put the Loctite on in the first place. <laughs> Okay, torque it again in steps. Okay, go ahead and reinstall your uh, your jack shaft again without the chain, and we're gonna check it again. <laughs> All right. He's making us curious to see if you really need that or not. Let's find out. Maybe we need a thicker one. I don't know. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna go ahead tighten up the swing arm axle. foot pounds okay here we go we're gonna do the alignment test again all right when you get my saw blade or right, my straight edge I'm gonna stick it flat on the front sprocket all right looks like it's too much now okay and then it should touch the other other sprocket all right and it looks like it's fine all right so, so yeah, see there's no gap anymore. There used to be like a little gap. So now I'm going to hold it flat. I'm going to hold it flat on the, uh, on the verse bracket if I can. It's kind of tough. All right, and then I'm going to line it up to the other one. Okay. And it looks like there's a, there's a little gap now. So, I don't know, man. Do we need to install that or not? Because uh, freaking the the front sprocket is uh, <laughs> I know, right? Before it was too much, and then now it now it's like a so before there was a there was a gap here, all right. So that means that the that the the rear sprocket was too far in, 
all right now it's touching all right but when i hold it straight against the uh against the rear sprocket when i hold it straight against the rear sprocket i've got a gap on the front now there's a, there's a little gap just a teeny tiny gap all right Pro probably let me see i know it's it's tricky to hold it on there properly but the, the rear sprocket is easier to hold it because it's bigger. Yeah, it's not a lot. I can't even get my fingernail in it, so. Yeah. But I'd say that's like a one millimeter gap, man. So I, I don't know, dude. <laughs> I think it's, I think the spacer, I think it'll be okay with the spacer. I'll get, we're going to go ahead with that, all right? Because before it was, there was a gap here, all right? Now there's a gap on the front. So it's like, now it's like too much, you know? I was like, is there a smaller, is there a smaller shim? You know? <laughs> okay, but we're gonna go with that, all right? I, I think that's, that should be fine, all right? If, and if it isn't, so if, um, I know it's gonna be hard to tell. If you see a lot of premature wear on the, on the front of this one, that means this is too far outwards, all right? Then we'll know, all right? And then, uh, yeah so anyway we'll take a look at the chain when we get it on there <laughs> all right i'm gonna get to put the chain on okay so i thought about just taking the chain apart and just feeding it in there but uh, i'm not going to do that because i didn't take my chain off so i have to i have to put both of the chains back on all right it's not super, since we're here it, i i would just say let's just do it that way you know um maybe i will make a separate video on how to remove your chain without um without taking the swing arm apart all right we'll do that okay just watch me do it. <laughs> wow, it just fell out last time. What's going on? Okay, there we go. okay, I'm gonna install the secondary drive chain. All right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. wait, hold. On. Okay, so before we install anything. So make sure your chain, all right, make sure your chain has the master link facing outward, all right, and it's pointing to the left, all right, because that's the way the, the motor spins, all right. We're going to put this in here, all right, and we don't have to put it on the sprocket yet. All right, we're going to put the the right side chain, the left side chain, oh, it's already dirty, it's just chain. <laughs> So much dirt on my bike, man. It's a dirt bike, guys. It's a dirt bike life, you know. <laughs> All right. Now you also want to loosen your motor as much as you can. All right. Or else it'll be, or else you won't be able to get it in. Trust me. <laughs> okay. Also, you don't have to have the the chain all the way on this on the on this. The counter sprocket on the on the right side. You can feed that on later because it's got plenty of slack right now. Okay, I'm gonna put my swing arm axle back on. I'm gonna torque it to 26 foot pounds. Okay, okay I'm gonna go ahead and install the, the linkage. Swing arm linkage. Okay. Okay, I'm going to torque the swing arm linkage to 20, 22 foot pounds with it. Ok, 
Okay. Put the wheel back on. Okay, so for whatever reason, my axle would not go back in again, so I had to loosen the adjuster, so now I have to readjust my chain. I'm kind of kind of pissed off. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do that, all right? I'm not going to show you how to do it, but it should be 10 to 15 millimeters of slack, guys. Um, maybe, maybe changing the primary drive made something move or something. I'm not sure, but it's not supposed to do that. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and torque it. I already torqued it. <laughs> I have to show you I torqued it. All right. And uh, that's it, guys. Okay, I have to put the foot peg back. All right, if you took the foot peg out, um, foot peg bracket out, put it back. All right. Let's make it do that. Okay, it's uh, 26 foot pounds is the torque for the. All right, uh, it's uh, 26 foot pounds the torque for the foot pegs. All right. Okay, and then now, uh, final thing to do is tighten that chain. Okay, so uh, according to uh, DB off road, the chain slack should be about five millimeters, guys. Five millimeters, not a lot. All right, so the uh, the 219 chain kit was seven millimeters. This one likes a little more tight. Okay, so I, I think that's fine. I think it's that's like too tight already, man. Oh, oops. Yeah, something's up with this one. <sighs> My adjuster's not on there. Okay, right. so I'm gonna loosen the motor mounts because I think I tightened them earlier because I we're doing the uh, the alignment. So when you wanna when you align it, you should have the motor bolts tight. All right. So now this should move now. Okay, here we go. Okay. You probably want it. Alright, so you want it at five millimeters, so I'm just gonna stick my head in here and look, and see how much it moves. Alright, actually that looks perfect already. Yeah, there's not a good place to really check. Maybe that's a little more. Maybe I want it a little bit more. Right there, right? <laughs> Whatever is at right now is fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them down. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go torque the mounts to 15 newton meters. Oh boy. Okay, and we're going to do the same on the other side. Okay, all right, and there's one last thing we got to do. Okay, so the uh, the torque for the the counter shaft sprocket, all right, the motor pulley, um, should be 34 to 37 foot pounds, all right, so I'm going to do 36, all right, somewhere in between. And there you go, it's not moving. So that's why that's why you should have everything in place and so now we can oh, it's like the old bike is moving. <laughs> okay so if you can't if it's moving all right you can stick something in here between the swing arm all right and and tighten it all right it's not good for your swing arm but there we go okay 
should be good. Maybe I've already, maybe I'd already over tightened it. I don't know. <laughs> okay, guys. But there we go. All right, last thing to do, guys, is to see if it'll work still. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna fire the bike up. See if it rolls. It is loud dude <laughs> that's really loud okay well so after we'd run it it looks like it runs okay make sure nothing is wobbling or anything all right <laughs> holy moly that thing is loud <laughs> all right i thought it would be quiet with the o-ring chain but it's still it's still pretty loud guys all right i want to go check this the um the the chain tension one more time okay so i just checked it again and i feel that mm, i could probably loosen it a little more so i'm going to go ahead and loosen it a little more right the chain doesn't need to be super tight like the chain like the belt okay guys so i'm gonna go try to get that closer i can get it to five millimeters but i really have to pull up on that chain okay so but um all right okay i think i loosened it a tad bit let's see if it sounds a little different loosen up a little bit so it's it's tighter and looser in certain spots so i don't know just try your best to get it to get it where you want it all right um so where my adjustment is is in like the middle all right so there's still plenty of adjustment left all right it's in the middle of the thing right here when it's fully when when you tighten it all the way it the bolt will be all the way down here okay guys so it's like in the middle somewhere it's fine with me there's plenty of adjustment. The the little ratchet thing isn't even doing anything right now, all right? <laughs> it's just chilling there, all right? Um, I didn't really use it that, all that much, all right? I just kind of used the pry bar to loosen it, all right? So that motor is like tucked all the way up in there almost, all right? Okay, so um, we'll just have to see how this thing wears out, all right? Um, okay, guys, it's kind of hard to check the alignment, but I can tell by looking at it, the the right the left side of the where the where the plates all right meet the sprocket there's like no gap it's almost no gap I can't get my fingernail in there all right this one I can get my fingernail at least I think I can yeah I can get my fingernail in there all right, it's a little looser so all right so what can I say um, with the without the without the shim in there it was uh, it was too loose on this side, all right? Too loose. And then when I put the shim in there, it was too tight. So I need a shim that's like in between. Okay, guys, but that's the best I could do. All right. Um, also, another well, another thing we did is I had to torque it. I, I torqued the this the this bolt after, all right? But it was already tight, so <laughs> I was able to. I guess I was able to tighten it with the with the impact gun just right. So okay, but anyway. Well, time will tell to see how it wears out, all right? If you see, if you look at the inside edge of the sprockets, all right, there shouldn't be any significant amount of wear on the inside, all right? If there is, then you know, like, something's out of alignment. So what I'm going to want to do is check. Okay, yeah, so see. just kind of get up in there and then look in there and see if it's eating, it's eating up more on the sides, all right? You can tell. You'll be able to tell. <laughs> Trust me. Like, look at this old sprocket here, all right? Um, yeah, so see how this one is, this one's evenly worn. So I guess what you could do is you could take the front sprocket out and check, um, to see if this one is, how well aligned this is. So you can see it's wearing out, but it's wearing out on both sides. So that's good. All right. Um, you want it to wear out on both sides. Now, if it looks like it's wearing out more on one side than the other, then yeah, see this one, this one looks like, so see this one looks like it's wearing out more on the back. All right. So that leads me to believe Maybe this one could have used a shim, okay? <laughs> Just a teeny tiny shim, but I never had any problems with that. All right, so it's not it's not super important, guys, but but yeah, I, I felt that we needed to use a shim, so we used it, okay? 
I, I felt we needed something in between though. Alright, All right, Hazeming here with some final closing thoughts on the uh, 420 chain kit from D DB Off-Road, alright? Um, it is uh, it is the hardest primary drive I've ever installed, guys. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. The, the 219 chain is much easier to install, alright? Just because, look at how much smaller it is compared to that chain, man. That chain is massive, alright? It, and it's brand new, it doesn't, it doesn't move around a whole lot. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, I feel that even the belt is easier to install, all right? And it's really annoying that you have to you have to check to, for the alignment and everything. That's that's extra work you gotta do. It's like you gotta uninstall it and then reinstall it. It's a real pain in the booty, all right? Um, it's pretty noisy, all right? I, we just ran it and I was like, holy crap, yeah, it's pretty noisy. Even if it has O-rings, it's still really, really noisy, all right? And I could see some of the some of the grease already flinging off from the chain so you're going to want to periodically um check the uh um just just periodically lube it all right since it's out of o-ring chain hopefully that chain will last a long long time all right it won't stretch as much as this guy all right this one stretches like crazy <laughs> that's what i say all right but i will be keeping my eye on it i i will have a follow-up video all right on how it's doing in the future or when it wears out i'll i'll do it because i'm going to do one for the 219 chain kit after this okay um yeah but for the most part pretty much like installing the the other chain kit all right or the pulley all right i um yeah so just just remember you're gonna need a so just remember if you got a belt all right it, the pulley probably won't just come right out you're gonna have to use something like this all right you're gonna have to use a three jaw or a two jaw puller all right or like a teeny tiny little pulley okay um that was the case when I removed my belt, all right? But I think I've done it so many times that, like, it just comes out no problem, <laughs> okay? Um, yeah, so the chain slack is 5 millimeters, guys, okay? The 219 chain was 7. This one is 5. It's a little bit less, all right? So, um, yeah, and then you just got to do the same maintenance you do with the chain, all right? Whenever you check that chain, I would check this chain out, okay? Um, the other, The other chain... I literally had to adjust it every time I rode it, all right? If I rode it like like 30 miles or something, I would find it loose again and I, I would have to tighten it, okay? Um, but uh, just remember, don't don't over tighten it, all right? That's what that's what this chain doesn't like, all right? When you, when you rev it, it tightens, okay? So you don't want it to be super tight, all right? Um, I think I got it, I got it, it's a little bit tight, all right? Yeah, it's, it's a little tough to adjust at first because it's so new, all right? There's not a whole lot of, uh, adjustment is what I want to say. It's like in the middle of the adjustment range, but I was, I got it kind of close to five millimeters, all right? It, it'll, it'll, it's probably still needs to break in, all right? I think when the chains are brand new, they stretch a little bit, all right? So when, when that happens, then it, you, you probably won't have to check on it as much, all right, is what I want to say. Okay, but there it is. I hope, uh, I hope it lasts me a long, long time, all right? I never, I never had a problem with the 219 chain breaking, but I did go through two sets of chains all right oh and that's so I, I want to talk about that real quick all right yeah so uh, i wanted to talk about the beauty of having the 420 chain all right so it has a clip type master link and you can just remove it while it's on the bike all right so if you need to change the chain or you know for whatever reason you need to take it out you don't have to take everything apart again all right that's the beauty of it all right, you just take the master link out somehow. I, I don't know how to do it. I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> but I've got an extra, I've got another 420 overing chain right here. All right, guys. So what Hayes Vegas plan in the future, it, well, okay, well, Hayes Vegas plan is to, uh, so this is an SRT overing chain, all right? I could, I could install this on the, the regular sprocket, right? But when this chain wears out, <laughs> Hayes Vegas is going to, I'm going to chop a couple links off of it and then stick it back on there. That's what I'm going to do, all right? I'm going to chop, like, one link and then put it back on. And then, uh, and then until, like, it wears out all, like, a whole lot, all right? And then, and then if I want to build a new chain, I'm just use this chain, all right? I'm just going to cut. I counted it, all right? I counted. It's 21 plates, all right? So that's, like, that's equivalent to a 42 link chain, all right? So basically, I counted the... The outside the outer um, outer plates all right and then you times it by two all right and I counted 21 links all right 21 links times two is 42 all right so it takes uh, a 42 link chain to replace this guy all right so to, to 
this is a regular spec okay um, so um, if the sprockets last a long time on this kit you could just keep on throwing new chains in there but just keep an eye on the sprockets make sure they don't get too pointy all right when they get too pointy and the teeth are almost all gone you need to chuck that thing all right so hopefully these sprockets will last a long time all right and Hades Mega's plan is to just replace the chain or chop the chain and then stick the bastard leg back on there that's my plan all right um, that's that's the that's the advantage of this kit versus this one all right this the 219 chain you can't do anything with this chain all right is these chains are really hard to work with all right they're hard to find now the 420 chain is a really common chain all right you can find them quite easily it's the same chain that's on your secondary drive all right so you could use that chain if you wanted to all right if you got like an old chain lying around you can chop it and stick it in there and it might fit Oh, my camera light went out of battery, so I think that's the end of the video, guys. <laughs> okay, so so there you go. That's how, that's my install video on the DB Off-Road 420 X-Ring Chain Kit, all right? Um, it's probably the same for the regular roller chain kit, all right? It's, it's the same exact thing, except this one has O-rings in it, all right? Um, yeah, so if you ever take it apart... There, there will be o-rings all right so make sure you when you put it back together you put the o-rings back in all right I, I will make a separate video on how to take that apart because i'm going to be installing a new motor after this okay so i'm going to have to take it take it all apart again anyway so okay thanks for watching hey big out um there will be uh i'll try to put all the torque specs in the video you can refer to them all right they'll be in a subtitle in the video and i will put them in the description of the video always torque your bolts all right because you don't know how tight it is it might be too tight or not tight enough all right okay thanks for watching hey we out hope you learned something by the way i raced i i just had a motocross race with a bunch of surons all right and the fastest guy there he broke his belt all right he broke his belt and he lost the heat race all right he was able to win the main race because they were able to replace the chain in time. <laughs> they replaced it with this chain kit, all right? So this chain kit or something similar to it, all right? And then he won the race, all right, guys? So that's, you know, if, if you need to, you need something that don't, won't break, all right? Because like, if, if you break a belt in the race, that's it. You've lost the race. So you can't do anything about it, man. Um, I mean, I guess you could try to fix it on the trail, but you're probably already lost big time, all right? Especially in the motocross race, you've lost. All right, if you need something reliable, the chain will will do the trick, all right? <laughs> all right? Especially if you have a modified Soron, yeah, you probably want one of these, okay? Um, also, it's up to you if you want to put this back on. I'm not going to put it back on, all right? There's really kind of no reason, and it keeps the... I, in my opinion, I think the motor runs cooler without it, Okay. But yeah, I guess if you're riding around in a lot of rocks and stuff or gravel, maybe it's a good idea. But I've never had anything pop in there, you know, get messed up. So I hope not. <laughs> all right. Oh yeah. So by the way, it took me like three hours to do this, guys. All right. So it was pretty it took a long time. All right. It was kind of difficult for me. All right. Um, sometimes it's easy to get that jack shaft in there, and sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it just slips right in, and sometimes it's you know. And I was fighting against the two chains. In my opinion, don't take your take your other chain off. Take the secondary drive chain off. It makes it easier, you know. But yeah, like I said, there's not a lot of room to work with in this chain. This chain's much bigger than the other one, right? But but anyway, yeah, it took me like three hours to do it because we have to take it out, put it back in. I'll check the alignment and everything. Yeah, it's it's a pain in the ass, man. <laughs> That's what I was say. All right, um, but it took me three hours. Um, yeah, so. I think this is like the hardest install I've ever done, all right? That's what I'll say. It's, it's harder than the belt. It's harder than the 219 chain kit, all right?